Okay, so hi, I'm Claire. Um, last week we did the Jet Engine Lab, and I was a group reporter. Um, so a little background just before jumping in. Basically, TurboGen is a form of power like electricity generation, and basically the the jet turbine, or sorry, the jet engine that we're using is it kicks in whenever like the base load generation plants aren't able to keep up with the, de the demand. So on hot days, which is like 50% of the year, maybe like 75% of the year here, it's hot. So whenever the need for AC is high, it, uh, it'll surpass this, and that's when the peak generation kind of starts. So this is the schematic, we've seen this three times already. Um, but I'm going to tell you all again. So it goes in and then air enters the compressor and is mixed with fuel and then combusted and that compression and combustion process creates the thrust, which does a few things. It will come through and then power the first turbine and then that in turn, like that power turbine, will drive the compressor. But then once the thrust exits the nozzle, it'll drive the second turbine, and that free turbine drives the electrical alternator, which like drives the load supply. Um, lab safety was pretty big. It took about like half the time, so we needed proper PPE, as always, so safety glasses and a hearing protection. And that thing is very loud. Um, pants and closed toed shoes. Richard has a Darwin line, I'm pretty sure he called it. Right, Darwin line, which I mean, like, you know, you don't want to stand by the inlet or the outlet ducts. Um, and then we had to do a visual inspection, so making sure that the inlets and the outlets were free of anything, and then we need a fire extinguisher just in case, and the system had to be locked, and then we had to check the fluid lines and the sensor lines. Um, we also had to check the fuel and oil quantity, the fuel or it was the oil, no, the fuel, which in this case was kerosene. We used like a stick, stuck it in there. It was like a DIY fuel gauge. Um, we made sure everything was connected tight. And then we did this test to verify that like all of the warnings will work properly. So once we turned it on, we pushed the throttle all the way up and just checked the messages. Um, and it, all of these were supposed to read zero one of them read 100 and it was like 1400 RPM, but Richard said it was fine, so it was fine. Um, it really, it had zero effect. And on here, this one was the engine RPM, which was controlled by the throttle. And then this is the generator RPM, which is controlled by the load. And then once we checked all of the warnings, we were good to go. And we changed the throttle like from 40 to 50 to 60 RPM and then we kind of brought it back down and then we increased some loads. It was honestly really, the whole process is pretty confusing. Um, you just, I just followed Richard's hand movements uh, and that was that. So this was our initial conditions. Like I said, we used kerosene as the fuel. Um, the energy content was 36.76 milliliters. Per liter, the fuel density was 815 kilograms per meters cubed, and the barometric pressure was 1 to 1.9 kPa, and that was necessary for the calculations done using the thermo tables. Um, we were measuring using the DAX system, we measured temperature <coughs> and pressure at various locations. Uh, fuel flow, current, voltage, engine RPM, generator RPM, and power output. So these were, and it is, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of graphs, so bear with me. Um, this is each, the temperatures and the pressures, it's all together, so it might look like a lot, but these two blue lines was the compressor, I mean, sorry, the compressor, like T1 and T2, and then up top, the green, was the first turbine inlet and outlet temperatures. And then the yellow was that last, so turbine two, the yellow, 
And then the dark green, that was the turbine too, and lit and out of it. And then these are the pressures for all, and pressure one and pressure five overlapped, which makes sense if you look at the Brayton cycle, like on a PV diagram. You can go to the next one. Um, these are the other graphs. So we have the generator voltage, current, power, and then the RPM for the engine and the generator. And if you look at the generator power, that like curve at the beginning that I was showing y'all, we're, we're pretty much measuring like how much power is needed to get over that peak and like what loads are necessary for it. And then in this one, and one was the engine RPM, so that's what the throttle was inputting. And that's like, it was, you know, we had to increase it and then decrease it and go back and forth. And this was the load. So we didn't start the load, like unpin it until a while into the experiment. Um, okay, you can go to the next one. These are the basic equations. It just, I mean, it covers whole ground, but we're, Trying to get to this point in order to find the work, you know, done from the compressors and the turbines, compressor singular. Um, let me go to the next one. So we have to select one point to analyze. And I was thinking about it before I got up here, and I feel like I could have analyzed at the, like where that maximum power took place, but I didn't do that. I chose it, I picked a point based on wherever. T1 would be 300, thinking that that would get me out of interpolating, but it didn't. Um, so this T1 to T2, like I said, was the compressor inlet and outlet and its correlating pressures. Um, T3 and T4 was for turbine one, T4 and T5 was for turbine two. And then these were its corresponding fuel flows, you know, all the following. You know, um, and then I calculated enthalpy using the thermo, like air ideal gas tables, and I had to convert the temperatures to Kelvin to do so. And I don't know what, like, the, I, had, I haven't interpolated in a while, and it was, it was fun. And I'm being completely serious, I missed it. Um, and then using those enthalpies, I found the work done by the compressor and then the specific energy added by the fuel flow, the specific work done by the turbine power, and then by the second free turbine. And in conclusion, the maximum power was 1,200, and theoretically it was, the maximum was about 1,000, so it was pretty close. And then, the efficiency of the, the power turbine cycle, which was driving the compressor, uh, was 3.7, which I'm not, I, don't, I didn't find what the theoretical expectation was. But then the efficiency of the whole system was 22.8, which was close to what we were expecting. So overall, I was pretty proud of this experiment. Um, it is possible to do it on the first try. I know you don't have any women in your group, but um, yeah, any questions? Yes. How many people were you got on the first try? Um, I believe he said five. Were you the first one you on the first try? No. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't. Any other questions?